Welcome to the next episode of our chocolate series. This one is a little bit impromptu because I hadn't planned on making this part of the chocolate series, but I thought, you know, why not? It's chocolate ice cream, it just happens to be vegan. So if you watch our videos, you'll possibly remember one that I did recently where I recreated a Ben & Jerry's core. Um, on the tub, they quite specifically say that they used condensed milk in their recipes. It's not in their recipe book. Those recipes, they, they never used those recipes ever in their life, I'm positive of it. But if you actually look on the tubs, they, they make their ice cream in, in an unusual way. And recreating it at home, I thought was basically impossible, but it's not. You, you can actually do it. And I'll link below the video where our version of their ice cream was just head and shoulders above theirs. But what it gave me was an idea is, can I create a vegan ice cream using vegan condensed milk? Now, Carnation make this in the UK. It is made of sugar, water, hydrolyzed rice flour, sunflower oil, and oat flour. Now, one thing I did note when I used this last time was it actually added solids, a good amount of solids to a vegan ice cream. And that's something that a lot of vegan ice creams really struggle with because you can't add the normal kind of things where you get solids from like milk powder and the actual dairy itself has a lot of solids in it. You don't get that. So you have to get solids from somewhere else. There are things like inulin that you can use and other various different powders, but you know, I'm not a massive fan. A lot of people have reactions to inulin. I don't at all. Um, you know, I've not, really used it that often because I don't want cupboards full of random ingredients. But this isn't so much a random ingredient as you can go to your supermarket and buy it. So what we are going to do today is make a vegan Belgian chocolate stracciatella. And I will explain what the stracciatella is as we do it. So we are, with our dairy ice creams, we normally start with our milk. Here we're gonna start with our milk substitute. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that later in the video because I'm not a huge fan of this one, but anyway. With that in the pan, we're gonna add in our dextrose. Now I've added a bit of a stabilizer to this. Again, the stabilizers are vegan. Most of them are, I'm gonna say most of them, not all of them, but most of them are. You can add that in and just gently warm that up. Add in your entire can of carnation vegan condensed milk and then just warm it up gently as i've added the stabilizers really we need this to come up to 60 degrees c as you're warming up add in your cocoa powder and then just get it mixed nicely combined so it's starting to bloom and bring out that flavor and then the last part we're going to do is add in our chocolate this is a 56 percent arima chocolate most 56 percent chocolate will be vegan automatically just look at the back of the pack all the ingredients turn the heat off add your chocolate and stir it until it's nicely combined and made a really nice silky base as you can see here so once it's all completely mixed and a beautifully silky base we're going to Put that in your container, add in two tubs of the Elmley plant-based cream, give it a nice final stir, and then put it in the fridge for a few hours to chill down. Once it's completely chilled, you're gonna take it out and as normal, just give it one final stir, loosen that base up, because it will thicken somewhat in the fridge, but it does thin out nicely with a good stir. Then put it in your machine to churn as normal. Now, because we're doing a stracciatella, what that means is we're gonna ribbon melted chocolate through the ice cream as it's churning. So when your ice cream gets right at the end of the churning process, you're gonna take your chocolate. Now, if you see here, our chocolate has bloomed and that's due to the heat in the house that we live in. And that blooming is the fat bloom type of bloom. What that means is the cocoa butter has come to the surface and solidified, and that's due to it coming up to a too high a temperature naturally. It basically means we've not stored it very well. Either way, you can melt it down and use it as normal. It has no effect on the chocolate you use in this recipe. We've melted it in the microwave and then added just a little bit of coconut oil to loosen it up, and that will help that solidify at the right rate in your ice cream and then take that to your ice cream machine and just gently ribbon that in. As you can see, it starts to solidify and gets nice small little pieces of that chocolate scattered throughout your ice cream base. Another couple of minutes and then we're gonna take it out, put it in a tub and put it in the freezer for a few hours. Thank you. 
So here we go, big old fat tub of chocolate ice cream. Let's see how this one turned out. I'm totally unprepared, like I haven't got my bowl, I haven't got my scoop. Let's dig some out and see. Scoops really well. Uh, chocolate ice cream, if you make ice cream professionally or at home or whatever, chocolate ice cream is notorious for going harder than other ice creams. Why is that? It's because there is usually a higher level of solids in the ice creams themselves. And that tends to mean it goes harder. You can fight that by adding some invert sugar, dextrose, glucose, golden syrup, you know, corn syrup, those kind of things. You can introduce those and it will soften it up a little bit, which is why I added dextrose into this rather than table sugar or sucrose. It has a, a much more effect of keeping things soft. You can add vodka if you want to, yawn. So let's try some of this vegan Belgian chocolate stracciatella and see what it's like. That, that is immense. The stracciatella, it means that you get a, a piece of chocolate in every bite. And haagen Belgian chocolate, that's actually how they do it. They, they ribbon the chocolate through, so you get loads of little flecks in there. The texture is perfect. There, there's no ice to the palate. It's a nice, strong chocolate flavor, but not bitter. Oh, that is good. This, thankfully, this is the, the milk substitute that I used. Just grab a little glass out of the cupboard. I wanna show you the color, donk. That'll do. I wanna show you the color. Obviously, you know what color milk is. It's milk colored, it's white. This stuff is like yellow. It's really watery. I don't know if you can see it in there. It's got a real strong tinge of yellow. It kind of looks like watered down egg. That's no smell to it at all. It tastes all right, actually. It tastes okay. It, it, it doesn't really taste of anything. It's it is. Oh, it's got quite a list. It's water, pea protein, chicory root fiber, sugar, sunflower oil, acidity regulator, tricalcium phosphate, natural flavorings, doesn't tell you what they are, a couple of vitamins and carrageenan for a stabilizer. I didn't try this when we were making it. It just looked hideous. But actually, I might change my mind about it. I don't, I don't know where it comes from. Where does it come from? If you know where this stuff comes from, let us know in the comments below. But this ice cream is exceptional. If you're looking for a vegan chocolate with, you know, stracciatella, I can't say it, uh, scattered throughout, you are not gonna go wrong with this recipe. This is the second one I've done with these in vegan form. I'll put a link to the strawberry hagen -Dars that we copied below. That was our absolute success. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one is just as much of a success. So I am really impressed with this stuff and I might make this my vegan staple for ice cream moving forward. Who knows? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>